Hey, very good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on Joy Asanya Live. It's always wonderful to know you are right there listening and watching us. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, the announcements by the presidency or rather that very in that move uh, in, a, in a bid to cost cut a uh, cost of governance to cut cost of governance rather president bola Tinubu has approved the directive to slash the size of the official delegations for foreign and domestic trips by 60 percent by up to 60 percent that has um, elicited a lot of reactions the new limits would affect travel by the president the vice president first lady and other top officials for foreign trips tinubu's delegation uh, will now be capped at 20 people down from the previous 50 uh, persons who would usually follow the president for these trips while that of the first ladies entourage abroad is strictly uh, stricted to just five members uh, more for more than 60 percent reduction of this you know for a lot of uh, people we didn't even know it was that much i mean when the president is traveling we didn't know as much as 50 people would follow him well now we have uh, 20 people following him for those uh, foreign travels for the vice president the foreign delegation will be limited to five uh, same as the wife of the president and same for his wife as well for domestic trips within nigeria the president's delegation is now capped at 25 uh, persons the first lady at 10 the vice president at 15 and his wife at 10 members for ministers their delegation are limited to just four members of staff on any foreign trip while government chief executive officers uh, would have just two how do you think uh, what do you think about this uh, would it indeed have that uh, cuts or uh, that that impact when it comes to cutting cost of governance there are several other aspects well we'll be opening opening phone lines later but that's after we go on a short break to return to discuss more so stay with us this is joy i saw your life well, thank you for staying back and, and joining us again here on Joy Asanya Live. Like I said earlier, we're talking about Tinubu's um, bid to cut cost of governance. He has slashed uh, the foreign uh, delegations and uh, domestic delegations of himself, top officials, his wife, the wife of the president, uh, the, of the vice president as well, and the vice president. But is that enough? In the studio to discuss all of this is our very own Mike Adinye. I like to have that um to personalize <laughs> you and own you our very own mike uh, if anybody sees mind. you in another in another station uh you will be fined so you are our very own mike Adinye. well you have said so and uh, that can be proven anyway. <laughs> the mike. possession is nine tenth of the law whoever has possession mm. is presumed to be the owner until proven otherwise okay and have yeah. you proved otherwise by having a uh, portraying a better title portraying a better title that's, that's an right. argument i would really have loved for, to go next, into uh, yeah next but that'll be, that'll be next today, time yeah. that'll that's be next right. time but let's talk about our president he's he's showing that um, he's being that he's being frugal he understands that nigerians are, are buckling up especially after the removal of fuel subsidy and here he's, he is uh, you know uh, slashing the number of delegations i didn't know that the president was traveling with as much as 50 persons you know, on some of these foreign trips and i know nigerians had criticized him uh, during the just concluded cop 28 in dubai when um, news took it that he went with over a thousand people even though they came back to say it was 400 but what do you think of all of this well uh, from what the president has portrayed so far uh, it shows that uh, we have a president that you know listens to the yearnings of nigerians you know we have a president that uh, listens to the plight of nigerians we've never had it this good it is the first time we we're having a president who, res who is responding the promptly. first time or you're yes. just comparing no, 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 him no, 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 the very I last what administration I'm saying because if we look at the last uh, had known you know in recent times so right, to say right. because if you look at the previous uh, administration the, you know traveling of overseas trips was a medium of uh, enriching mm. those who were um, the Esther codes and yeah all. the Esther codes and uh, dt whatever but i'm not a civil servant so i'm not prone to that uh, you are enriching or ap appreciating those who have been very supportive of the government you know by taking them out to go learn a, a few things but if the president in his wisdom has decided based on the paucity of funds uh, based on the, the economy right now to prone down to cut down the number of uh, you know delegates in every delegation i think uh, 
it's a right step in the right direction. Why then are Nigerians still skeptical? Because I, I heard that the criticism that, oh no, he's just trying uh, to win the heart. But then again, isn't that what governance is about? Politics. But this is not the first time anyway. Because if you have a president that would say, okay, when people agitate and he listens to them, it means mm. uh, he believes that prayer, how do you call it, sovereignty resides in the people. Mm. This is the same thing that happened uh, during the festive, or festive period, right. the Christmas period, when the, the president decided in his magnanimity to cut down the price of uh, the, the prices, says. yes, mm. to you know, for Nigerians who are traveling to you know other places to celebrate with their loved ones, he slashed it down. People still complained. Yeah. So even if the president <laughs> decides today that okay, you're not paying anything, the school fees uh, free, was, uh, people will still complain and say okay, he's using that to pacify the people. But no matter what he does, I've seen a president who is focused, mm. contrary to the agitations, the expectations of people when this uh, regime, you know, started. You know, we're seeing something different. We're, in, in, in summary of it is that the summary of it is that we now have a president who listens to the plights of the people, who is carried, or who is concerned about the plight of the people, or who listens to the yearnings of the people. Mm, but for, for, but this actions. administration, after the removal of fuel subsidy and that the attendant effect of it, a lot of Nigerians had to buckle up, and it seems like top officials were it, especially our Senate. What do we do with the Senate? That's one one. Um, the, uh, sector of the government that's really really milking the nation dry won't you say because that's another conversation that went right okay good you're cutting down the delegation of trial of uh, uh, people who follow you on on trips but what are you going to do about the senate uh, and, and uh, or rather our, our house of assembly no, you know, i want you to understand one thing we have three tiers of government and mm. every tier of government is supposed to be independent and seem to be so it's sovereign Mm. You know, though in some cases they have overlapping functions. The press is not the place of the president to decide for the Senate. Mm. If we truly have an independent uh, legislative arm of government, so how do we get our our legislators? The to legislators understand? ordinarily are supposed to be representing the people. If the president had not done this, the agitation would have originated from the Senate ideally. or the National should, Assembly. Should ideally, yes. Know. But when that is not done, it means uh, uh, the so-called representatives of the people. I yet to come to terms with the fact that there's hunger in the land, that people are crying and complaining. Do they really listen to their people? I doubt. You doubt? They've proven otherwise, yes. Right. What, what, so we what, have what, a president what? that's leading by example. I'm mm -hmm. sure that will move to other tiers of government. So how do, do, how do the citizens, because these complaints that are on social media and the agitation seem to be on social media and the, the media as to cutting co cost of governance in that tier of government, what would you say the citizens can do to... to get their representatives to say this isn't what we planned and you know with the composition of the house uh the the, the legislative we had i think this is the first time we have so many political parties about eight about yes, ten right, yeah. ten political parties represented in the in both both houses so what would say if, if your nobody was that lone voice who said oh no let's not let's not put this much amount on on palliate on on uh, um for ourselves uh, in several instances right now i can't even think of which one to uh, to speak of and leave which one to leave we heard about uh, that um holiday holiday packages that was to be mailed i don't know if you remember when uh, mm. the senate president was talking about the mails that we are going to get mails you know and nigerians are not fools they knew what that meant it means they were said there are several allowances and all of that so how can the, the citizens help in 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 this this in this well unfortunately the citizens are handicapped because um uh ordinarily uh, we are supposed to have a robust uh, senate or a national assembly mm. based on the, the number of political parties uh, you know that uh, won the elections different from what has always been you know in uh, the recent past we've always had uh, either two or three political parties having representation at the national assembly but this is the first time we're having as many as uh, eight to nine political parties who are you know putting up representation and then what do we expect as uh, citizens of this country we're supposed to have sorry we're supposed to have a senate or a national assembly that opposition would have a voice but unfortunately as it is right now is it that they have not settled or they're still waiting for palliatives from the heads of various uh, either the the senate or the house of representatives because they're not really they're not making noise mm -hmm. you know gone are the days of uh Inginaya, Baribe, exactly. you know, Malai. we've not had that kind of person the lone voice you know that would make noise in the wilderness we've not had that in, uh, in this everybody just senate. conforms everybody is just comfortable <laughs> waiting for when they will get the cars they'll get their holiday packages and all I, that I, i'm not you sure know, which one to speak home, on and which one to, to take home 
you know, and all that. Everybody appears to be selfish at this time. Nobody is truly representing the people, as the name implies. Mm. And over the over the this we've already not had it. They're supposed to. Have, we're supposed to have a robust opposition at the national assembly. So, but we, so we're not so, experiencing that. So what's happening on our mandate? We should stand. We remember when everybody the president was so throwing the path of a one political party. It appears everybody wants a, a survival strategy. Nobody but that's wants one to be thing. Seen. But that's one thing. Nobody really wants to be seen, seen to be that long yeah. voice opposing. Otherwise, I remember at some point in time the Labour Party that felt at some point will give uh, the how do you call it the APC they a run for the yeah, yeah. But uh, that did not happen. I, at some point, I watched um, on television when. A member, I think one a Labour Party representative or so, who was supporting the APC party. Uh, support, support I it. was surprised yes, that, that they were uh, seeing right. The Labour Party, irrespective of the fact that the ideologies are different, you know, tend to be supporting the leadership of the Senate mm. led by APC. Instead of giving that, is that are you expecting an opposition with that kind of person? No, Definitely, but should there be animosity want, at all times? I wouldn't want to use the Alleluia boys uh, as was preached earlier, you know, in the previous uh, regime. Because uh, it appears, even though it is not, that we are seeing a mono, how do you call it? A, a mono party? Uh, yes, system, irrespective of their different uh, political affiliations. Did it surprise you that when the president arrived at uh, that uh, joint, um, uh, joint session, session yeah. there was, they, they, were, they were all singing out loud, on yeah, your mandate is, we shall stand. Yeah, that is the same thing. On your mandate about. we it shall appears stand. appears everybody at the Senate now is, uh, is uh, APC. But that's something a lot of people had uh, uh, envisioned. The, the president being the Jagaban mm. is going to... And we're no longer is that, is that necessarily a good yeah, thing for our democracy? It is not. That is why it's supposed to be a democracy. Because if you allow the ruling party to continue to have their way at all point in time, without raising eyebrows, the ruling party is not supposed to be right at all times. Mm. We want that lone voice that would you know, intimate Nigerians that uh, it is not uh, Uhuru, it's not... Uh, what uh, most uh, nigerians are thinking wow you know because everybody appears to be singing the same song on your mandate we shall we stand even when your labor party or other political parties nobody has distinguished himself at that level everybody is doing the part of apc okay you have just alluded that it is um it is out of the president's uh, pay, pay, pay bill to look into what the senate is doing per mm. se uh, but who else can help Petitions? Does it work here in this Where part of the country? Well, we can only send petition to God. <laughs> Even that recall that I was, you know, people oh, are scared of oh, before oh, now. We're no longer seeing all those things. I don't know what is happening. Could it be the leadership uh, strategy of the president? The president is a very wise man. I must give it to him. Because even when some uh, issues that have arisen in other states that are not directly uh, involving his political parties, or party, he steps into a middle uh, in order to see how he can uh, cushion crisis in such a state, even when they're not APC states. And yet, so he's he seeing himself as a Nigerian president, not APC president. He's seeing himself as a Nigerian, a Nigerian president. Nigerian president. Exactly. That is why anything that concerns any political party, he tries to step in to see how he can solve it. I remember what happened uh, between uh, Wiki and uh, Fubara recently. Mm. You know how he stepped in and uh, invited an APC governor, uh, a PDP governor, to see how he can, uh, you know. Uh, you know, cushion uh, the effect of uh, the crisis that would have arisen in River State. He stepped in promptly, and that was, uh, you know, curtailed. Even though we see, we see hearing some bickerings and all that at the background. It's not as loud as it would have been. However, his his his, his, interv in. his intervention or mm. eight point uh, um, agreement mm. uh, still didn't quell tempers. Uh, so, that, if, if we have it, to digress you know, it did, a bit, it did, it did. Otherwise, uh, River State would have been smoking by now, if not for the intervention of the president and uh, the stakeholder, uh, River State uh, South South stakeholders were invited for that meeting at least. That tension that had arisen at that time, mm. which was almost at the peak, you know. Remember, take note of the fact that the, the River State uh, House of Assembly was demolished. And then we're hearing uh, 40, mm -hmm. 24 mm -hmm. members of APC moving to PDP, PDP moving to APC. Some of those things are not being heard again. At least recently, three yesterday or so, those same people who had left, who purportedly left the party or left the State House of Assembly, you know, were asking the governor for, for the budget. The it means, you know, it so is directly, directly, yes, is yielding fruits based on the president's uh, strategy. Mm, but when you hear nuances from both sides of the... Mm, yeah, it's this not as loud as it ought to be. It would have been, it, it would if have not been. for the intervention of the president. Now, 60% uh, of delegations have been slashed. What, where else would you want the president to look at? Because uh, if you want him to really cut cost of governance. Uh, well, the president, as the leader of this country, has started well. It's left for the governors to do the same thing because the shenanigans uh, of previous administration appears 
to still play out in most states of the Federation, where political appointees or appointments are based on satisfaction or compensation of those who are taking steps during the elections. They see it as a strategy to compensate them. Mm. So but but this, is what beyond, this is beyond the president's pay grade. Yeah. Also, that influence you're talking about on the governors as well. No, it has. The president, uh, from what I have seen so far, mm. appears to be willing so much uh, influence on the governors. For whatever he says, stands. And I'm seeing them being led by the decision of the president. That it will definitely have a, you know, an effect at the state level. Okay. Yes, that's my belief. I, I hold tenaciously on, 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 on that. Uh, so, uh, um, some of those bills that we expect state governors to gazette or assent to and state houses of assembly, if it doesn't, can we still point at the president as the poli has lack in the political will or maybe that may be his, um, maybe that's, that's his stance on, on those situations? Yes, because yeah, if, yeah, he, if, body, he, yeah. if he, if, if he, he exerts that much influence, it means everything that's happening is either he says so or there's a renegade no not necessarily that it does not have to assent to some of those bills the governors are not as strong as they were during a uh, uh, president uh, good luck ability jonathan take note you know but uh, uh, the body language of the president should ordinarily you know send a me me message to some of these governors it's not everything that comes to the president's uh, desk or table that must be assented to mm. you know he has to vet it has to study it very well He's a very intelligent man. We're seeing a president who is different from uh, the pre-election uh, activities that uh, took place. I'm, you know, we, we, his prompt response to issues, response to ministers and all that, his lieutenants, shows that he's uh, a very Whatever proactive Whatever do you president. mean by what happened during the elections? I'd like you to say, because a lot of people were just as uh, skeptical about this president yes, yes, as yes. you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what exactly made, made you skeptical? I'm seeing, I'm seeing two different persons. You know, at some point, we saw a president that was uh, looking, ap appeared to be frail, who was sick, who was seen not to, have, not to be able to take bold steps or take decisions that will affect this country. So I was saying, oh, okay, he needed to rest. He's supposed to be a godfather. Mm. But he's doing some of the things, the decisions that, you know, tend to portray otherwise, you know. That's like, uh, for instance, at, and at some point, there was this rumor that the president was sick. He couldn't go without uh, some things, AIDS and all that. We we'll see a president. Uh, what is what the president has not done right now is, you know, to play football. I've not seen him playing football. Can I Otherwise, see a very strong president? However, but that in time terms of his, uh, how do you call it? Uh, it's celebral, yes. right? Yeah, celebral. Economic policies, you know, decisions per time or issues of governance, policies of governance appear to be in in the, in the right path. Mm. They are different, or con quite contrary to what. Uh, people were expecting or portraying him to be prior to the elections. Right. Well, it's time to go for a very short break. When we return with open phone lines, we'll still discuss a bit about this president, what he's doing, especially his fight against corruption. And recently, uh, Senator Lin Dume asked the president, or rather was it advising the president, uh, to dismantle what he called emerging political cartel uh, around him. We'll get to that and a lot more when we return. Stay with us. This is Joya Saying Live. Welcome back. This is still Joya Saying Live. And Barrister Mike Adinye is right here uh, with us uh, discussing so much. Recently, Nigerians, uh, irrespective of uh, party, also celebrated and commended the president for his anti-craft war. Now, I'll just take it to you. How do you find that? Do you think it's worth celebrating or this is indeed what should be done? However, we also have Nigerians who, from the ne the other vein, are asking, oh, is it because she, she's a woman? Is it because she's Christian? Is it because she's Southerner? And all of that. Are you surprised at the reactions from some quarters? Uh, well, uh, it notes the fact that the, it does not uh, the Although you've not mentioned uh, who is involved, in I this have not mentioned uh, so who is involved. Know, but hypothetically, unless speaking. you want me to talk about his uh, corruption uh, uh, drive, you mm. know, in recent times, and I'll tell you that uh, it's been quite uh, holistic, but will not be complete because, like, at, you know, in some um, medium or media, so to say, today, I, I you know, I, I heard and read uh, a few lines where people were saying. Uh, whatever has happened to the other person should equally be meted on the second person. Somebody okay, I think it's time to get explicit now. Yes, yes, I yes. was talking about the, the just uh, suspended Minister of Humanitarian and, Africa, and yes. Poverty Alleviation. Uh, but that I, I do, do right. I do my own very sister. Mm, well, okay. It has happened, it has happened. Uh, but I wonder why these things will continue to happen to my own people, you know, people who are close to me. 
but how bitter does it make? I think uh, what the president uh, did, like I said earlier when we started this, uh, you know, uh, broadcast, when you started this broadcast, uh, and the president uh, listens to the yearnings of the people. It means his ears are on ground. Uh, whenever people start, uh, people start agitating, he acts uh, promptly. Uh, just the way people have started saying, okay, take note that when the first person was removed, uh, you know, the other lady, the, mm. what's her name? Ajia Shehu. Shehu, yeah, when mm. she was That's removed. That's the NSIPA. Yeah, people were yeah. saying, ah, okay, why not the minister, the minister, the minister, you know, was equally removed. Now people are saying, ah, why not the minister of interior, minister of interior. Exactly. So I will not be surprised when uh, the same thing is meted on the minister of interior. Mm. It shows that the president has a listening ear. That's the summary of it all. And I'm sure he will act uh, promptly. You know, if, you know, when he started, some of the steps that were taken, People started giving excuses. They say, "Okay, he's doing this uh, because uh, because of the currency or currency swap, or mm. that was you know seen to be f trying to frustrate Him, the president's right. emergence during the elections and all that." Uh, when it happened to Baba, people say, "Okay, because he's a northerner, uh, that, that, that he was investigating." People must always have reasons for certain decisions that are taken by people in authority. Mm. You know, that is, uh, we call that, uh, not, not propagandist machinery, people are being sentimental. And that is what has always affected us right from the First Republic. Because generally as a person, I believe that if uh, Mr. A does what is wrong, you know, certain punishment uh, should be meted on him. And if Mr. B does the same thing, the same punishment, we shouldn't uh, link it to where he comes from. We say, okay, you know, we are heterogeneous. So when it happens to a Yoruba yes, man, say, ah, it's all. happened to a Yoruba man because he's a Yoruba man and not a Hausa man or not an Igbo man or because he's a minority or because he's from the north, he's from the south. So this, all these uh, excuses or agitations or sentiments will still be expressed by people from those zones when uh, people who are uh, seem to be corrupt, you know, are dealt with according to the laws of the land. But, but this is really surprising because from each vein, I mean, from each side of the mouth, these are people, Nigerians, who are tired of the corruption uh, in governance. We want uh, sanity in that. We don't want corrupt uh, uh, politicians or office, office holders. And then when you see somebody trying to fight corruption, it seems like, oh, no, by all means, you know, um, He's from my area, and that is why he's from my side. When will we get to a point where there is that? Is, is it ever going to happen where all everyone is just ready to fight corruption? But you answer that after this call. We have a caller. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Okay, we lost uh, that call right there. Kindly call us back. The numbers to reach us from is uh, is displayed in the screen. So call us and let's hear your thoughts on what we are discussing. But I, I was just saying that is it possible to get a nation that is all hands in in the fight against corruption? It's, a, it's very, very possible. Because how is it possible? That's a very big question. Mm. When what happens to Mr. A, you know, happens to Mr. B, when uh, you know they, they, they are made to face the same uh, you know punishment for doing or carrying out certain uh, you know assignments that were not actually they are you know assigned to them or carrying out certain acts that were not assigned to them irrespective of where the person comes from and another thing too i need i think uh, if not this government uh, subsequent government should look into is uh, the way amana appointments of heads of uh, some of these institutions anti corruption uh, institutions or agencies mm. you know when you, you allow people to go to the ranks you know to get to the zenith of uh, some uh, of their career or some uh, institutions i think uh, we that is uh, the starting point to achieving uh, you know fighting uh, corruption you know right, okay. in depthly or fighting corruption holistically that's but against the appointments yes, that are you right. know, when you have there's no way i'll be fighting a president that has given me an appointment here, according to what people say, he will pay the piper the tears, isn't mm -hmm. it? You cannot say, okay, uh, Barista Mike Adina, you'll be made the chairman of INEC, and you feel that uh, when I emerge, I will not do the bidding of the person who has appointed me. The appointment mechanism of heads of institutions should be treated different or should change. And once that uh, takes place, I think the right thing will be done. That will be the starting point of fighting corruption in this country, irrespective of who is involved. We'll be looking at faces. Let the institutions be independent and let the heads of these institutions grow to the ranks, to the zenith of uh, 
such institutions. And then at that point, they will act independently, will, no matter who will be hurt mm. in the course of uh, them acting according to the powers you know, that, that sets or that has set up the institution. But is it not about the personality and the need to do that, which is right. I mean, Jonathan appointed the INEC president, uh, INEC chairman, chairman. Uh, and still lost elections. So in that, in that case, That's what That's a what rare happened? case. Right. It was bec uh, that happened because uh, certain steps were taken by President Jonathan. Good luck, Billy Jonathan. If President Good, Good luck, Jonathan had decided at some point to cancel the election, nothing would have happened in this country. People would have made noise, you know, as the chief executive officer of this country. He would have simply asked the army or the police or security agencies, ah, take care of the streets and nothing will happen. Just the person of Joe Jonathan, the decision he made, which was, uh, I'm sure, divine. You know, uh, that's why it happened the way it happened. Otherwise, at some point, people were saying, why not remove uh, the chairman of INEC and appoint somebody who's from your place, mm -hmm. who will do your bidding. But as a detribalized person, he wanted election to take place and then allowed uh, INEC to be truly independent. Now, it's maybe too early to appraise this administration. However, we've also had the advice from uh, the chief whip uh, of the Senate, uh, Aline Dumi, telling the president to tackle or dismantle the emerging, what he calls, uh, uh, political ca uh, cabals within, within his um, uh, administration. What c could he possibly mean by that? I, you are you also sensing the same thing? Yeah, you know, the emergence of this president did not just come as a, an individual or as a singular person. Right. There are a lot of persons who aided his emergence. Naturally. And uh, whether he will do that or not depends on him. But I think he, what, he, what he needs at this point in time is uh, prayers and uh, some form of support. Here because we go again, Nigerians and prayers. Yes, we support each other for divine direction because uh, there's no way the president would not appreciate those who have supported him to emerge. He's doing that gradually from mm -hmm. the body language of the president. You know, that is something he would do. By cutting down some of these appointees, where do you think some of these uh, delegations and all delegates, you know, who accompany him for foreign trips? And where do they come from? There are people who have supported him during the elections. There are people who have been with him during the elections or prior to the elections. There are people who have always supported him, even before he became president. So some of these so things some is for compensation time. time. You know, people he has known over time. But as time goes on, when these persons are empowered, he will begin to shade off some of these things. You know, some of these uh, people tying him, you know, the, the April string they call it. Mm -hmm. yeah, tying him or holding him to ransom, to, you know, to compensate them. Mm -hmm. But I start hearing, like, uh, I heard that side of Kubo saying well, at some point that he supported him, he wants him to do this, he wants him to do that, he feels frustrated, he's not getting what he wanted from the president and all that. So at some point, he has started well. The fact that, um, you know, within six months, he has decided to prune some of the people who go around with him shows that uh, at some point in time we'll uh, get a president who would want to truly serve the people of Nigeria and not according to the whips and uh, caprices of his supporters. However, when we hear cabals, I mean, after the past administration, Nigerians still have that short, <laughs> the short Cabal people yeah. who work for him to yes. Not na yes, cabals. They are with him, supporting him. Uh, yeah, but, 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 but in this, in this context, him. in this context, the, 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 the word cabal used to in, incite fear among and, 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 and yeah, because anxiety. Because of what happened in the previous administration. Because of what happened, what, yes. because of what happened wife, in the past administration. administration the yes. president's wife at the had time yes. had to scream out to mm. say the cabals have hijacked, hijacked the government. The government. Mm. So, um, wha it, it, could it be in that context that uh, Aline Dume is also speaking? The cabal of the previous administration cannot be the same cabal now because we because have, this is the Jagaban, you know, is that one, it? Is the Jagaban, you know, the man, the power broker, is a man who knows it or who sees it before it happens. A very proactive person, contrary to the expectations or yearnings. Uh, or expectations by, you know, of Nigerians. Mm, but he is saying there's emerging cabal. Emerging so, cabal? Yes. Is, is I, don't it see it, I don't see it. So a president who has decided to cut off, that is his own perception anyway. It's a personal opinion which uh, does not uh, stand to be the truth. Mm. You know, he may just be thinking in that light because of what he has seen in the past. Mm. Probably he's still carried by the euphoria of what happened. To <laughs> euphoria. Yes, yeah, so some okay. of the things that happened. So that cabal thing is still lingering. I don't see the president having... Rather, what I'm seeing the president doing right now is that he's cutting off some of those... Uh, the persons who were around him, who have been around him. But what would you say is proper compensation? I mean, a lot of people did work really hard for the president's mm -hmm. emergence. And sometimes you, you listen to some APC members, some of whom really worked hard, and they're like, we weren't compensated. But when would we get a political scenario where you're working for this person because you're sure that this person would deliver dividends of democracy to everyone? And not necessarily, oh, okay. What would be in it for me, which is the agitations and, and all the hula baloo we've been hearing from uh, some quarters within the party? You know, no matter, even if you give somebody a cow, he will still expect an elephant. 
That's how uh, can he, human can beings the president were wired. indeed give everybody discount? Yeah, because uh, if you ask me, the president, even prior to the elections, mm. in his uh, pre election activities, I know that in most of the states he visited, I know how much money, according to what I heard. When he went to Brussels, I know how much was given to the governor to give to party faithfuls. So there's no way, uh, no place that the governor went or the president went to prior to the election that people are not given money. I would wonder what they're expecting to do. You cannot satisfy political everybody. Political appointments. At the same time. Political no, appointments. What kind of appointments? He has given them appointments, and those who are not uh, performing according to expectation are given, shown the way out. He does not have more. Is he supposed to? Is, it, is Nigeria is the president's uh, personal estate that he will create artificial appointments to satisfy people? Hmm. Remember, the country is uh, struggling to stand because of the weak economic policies of the previous administration and the corruption that existed at that time. So Nigeria is bleeding. So you want where do you continue to borrow money because we want to satisfy people? But we have indeed been borrowing a lot of money. Yeah, so so when, we talk about, we when we talk about when we talk about when we talk about this same cut, cutting cost of governance and uh, you put beside it the, the, the number or the amount being borrowed, uh, it's been consistent really. Mm. Uh, is it really uh, um, sustainable for our economy? Yeah, because if President met a very weak economy, if he had met a robust economy with mm. uh, a strong uh, currency or value of the currency, I don't think some of these borrowings would have been taking place. But the President met a very weak economy based on the weak economic uh, policies and indices of the pre previous uh, administration. Mm. So there's no way he can act without borrowing. But I, in doing that, I think what the president, like for instance, it was never thought of that some of these refineries will work. But the president has always been talking about the Cardinal refinery working, the Portaco refinery working, the Dangote refinery working. So it means, it's a, there's a room was not built in a day, that economic policies or indices that we put in place by this administration that will gradually pay off some of these uh, uh, you know, indebtedness of Nigeria to other countries. And the, con the country will become uh, independent. You know, it's not something he can do automatically. It's a gradual process. Otherwise, he will crash. How will he sustain himself after meeting a very weak economy? He needs to borrow to stand. Mm. And he needs to what borrow to set industries in place. Right, he needs to borrow. Because it, when these refineries start to uh, work or become operational, the demand for the dollar would definitely drop. Of course. Take note of the fact that the dollar is international uh, currency. And uh, what uh, was adopted by Saudi Arabia, you know, before the emergence of the World Bank to become uh, uh, the, what they call the oil money or oil currency. Mm. You know, that is what is making the Naira or the value, to co the value of the Naira to continue to dwindle because the more we continue to buy or exchange or demand for the dollars, it, you know, that will automatically weaken the Naira. And if we have this, and take note of the fact that uh, the oil, oil industry is what uh, has more, m most demand for the dollar. And if we have the local refineries working, working. the demand for, the, for, for importation the of oil, would, would you know, would drop. would drop. And that will automatically affect the demand for, for, for the dollar. And that will, at, at some point, give our currency a boost. So it's a gradual thing. Let the president be one year, two years, three years. I, I see a country that will uh, change for, for, for the better. Mm, you seem very optimistic. Yes, I am. Based on the sub steps of uh, decisions that have been taken by the president. So I'm right. quite convinced. Are you, also, are you also optimistic that some of the promises he has made, especially when it comes to those initiatives that will cushion effect of, of um, um, subsidy removal, would indeed be implemented? Uh, case in point would be his announcement of state of emergency on food insecurity. He gave a hundred million naira and two hundred million naira to House of of, of Reps and House of Assembly. Has that been substantiated? What, yes, it has. In, in fact, there was even a, a, a senator that admitted. However, we're also hearing, oh, uh, we're waiting for the Ministry of Agriculture to give us all of that. And it seems like Nigerians are building distrust in spite of those many efforts that he's putting in place. So, are you also very in, in, um, optimistic that the, the masses, the most vulnerable, will have a sigh of relief, especially when we now now look at um, a ministry like the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation now saddled or characterized with so much corrupt uh, allegations. Mm -hmm. So where is your optimism coming from? I take note of the fact that uh, uh, these things cannot be done automatically. They will gradually, gradually, gradually take uh, place and take shape. But I want you to understand one thing, that most Nigerians have this distrust because of what happened in the previous administration. I remember the trillions of Naira 
that was said to have been expended on the f uh, is it, uh, school feeding, whatever, whatever. Mm. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> because that even it, during you know, COVID-19. Yeah, COVID-19 and all that. And these things were not that. Plain price for a pit of hell. So be based on the antecedents of our leaders or previous administration, that is giving that sense of despair, you know, to Nigerians. They don't trust you know, the pronouncement or policies of government because they see it as a mere propagandist machinery. But when you match the, some of these uh, pronouncements with physical steps, mm -hmm. you know, gradually people will begin to understand the fact that we have a government that is different from the previous administration. Remember, take note, that prior to this time we had a minister of information that was singing a different tune from the SA to the president on media and publicity. Uh, in person of Alaji, Lai, Lai, Lai Mohammed and Garubashi and all mm -hmm. that. So we had some of these misgivings ca that characterized the previous administration. Mm. So these things are still fresh in the minds of people. You know, based on what they have experienced. Experience, right. in, in locally, they say, fire burn you, you fear Chako. So based on the, the antecedents of previous administration, based on the happenings in previous administrations, where government will say something different from what is on ground. ground right. That has been, you know, is the notion most Nigerians have. They are looking at it as if it has become a norm for subsequent administration. But it's only the action, the steps, the body language of the president that will make people gradually have different thoughts, different expectations, different belief systems, different norms concerning the government. The president is not really talking much. He's acting. And we are very comfortable with that, especially for some persons who, are, who can be called paragons of circumspection or Hebrew prophets. Mm. Those who have the ability to see be, you know, beyond the physical or beyond the, the euphoria of the moment. You should be able to decipher between what happened in the previous administration and what is happening right now. Mm. The president is still very fresh. Take note of the fact that the previous administration appointed ministers how many months, six months or thereabout into that into administration. administration. But this one acted swiftly and promptly. Mm. And we have governance in place. So you cannot compare this government to the previous administration, irrespective of the fact that both uh, you know, governments were of the same political party. You know, but I think as time goes on, people will begin to think. But I won't, want, I won't end this without saying this. That the, econ the economy of Lagos State, that made Lagos State to be independent, irrespective of federal allocation, is the same idea, the same philosophy that is guiding the president in this administration. When he was the governor of Lagos City, he acted independently without the president, President Obasanjo's government. Right. And that's the same thing it's based on his economic policies, based on his economic acumen, based on his policy, uh, they call it economic indices mm. that would uh, drive, you know, the economy of this uh, country in this administration. I see that happening in no distant time. But the president needs time because uh, corruption was endemic. Corruption had eaten the fabrics of this country. It take to take a gradual healing process for us to get to that level where we become financially independent and uh, devoid of corruption. It, it, there's, there's such a time for Nigeria because um, a lot of people have said it, it was it was something it was all, all this corrupt this corruption allegations here and there was just waiting to happen because um he ha didn't look uh, deep into who he was bringing into the cabinet is that something you agree with you know he, you know at some point take note of the fact that people were complaining that the president was only appointing those they had met in the past we don't expect the president to know the minds of the people like shakespeare will say that if you cannot find the construction of, of the heart or the face you know some of these persons are new to the president it's from their actions and inactions that will determine whether how long they can serve or how long they can work in this administration i know at some point in time that two or three weeks ago the president had warned that any minister who fails to perform will be shown the way out of government so he's monitoring all of them he's watching the activities so because uh, most of them majority of the people who are working in this government were just meeting the president they don't know him personally they had not known him they had not worked with him you know so it will take a gradual process for them to get acquainted with the way the modus of operation of mr president and uh, key in accordingly now the president has of course uh, shown that he is he has, has he, he has the capacity yes and to take decisions to respect the exactly I, want, I hope he will do that to the ministry of uh, 
Minister of Interior in this time, time so that it, he will balance it, you know. Since my sister has been affected, <laughs> the lady has been affected. <laughs> and this is the kind of uh, <laughs> thought a lot of people have. Okay. But um, uh, how, how, how about uh, looking into, because a lot of conversations now now arrive into the Nigerian air saga. Nobody seems to be talking about that. When is the president going to look into that? Or, you know, do you think he should, he should would it be distracting for him to look back into Nigeria, what Nigeria happened Nigeria in Nigeria the aviation? Scam. And if it were in other countries, a lot of things would have happened. Mm. Some and people would have been on their way to the gallows in, in China, China for instance. We're expecting that to happen. We're expecting that to happen in this country. Because how will you come and tell so much uh, lies and uh, at the end of the day you're cooling out somewhere? How much was expended on this project and nothing happened? The EFCC has so much to do. We're waiting as Nigerians to see the extent to which the anti-graft agency can act in that uh, light to make mm. sure that some of these uh, people who took Nigerians for granted, you know, are called to other, are dealt with according to the laws of the land. At that point, we'll have a balanced uh, justice system and not selective. Right. Okay, what's your last thoughts uh, for people listening to you right now? And uh, you seem to be all optimistic about the yes, peace president. Yeah, if you call the steps that I've been taking, respect to the fact that the last uh, the minister who was uh, who has been shown the way out is my sister. But mm -hmm. I think uh, for us to have a balanced a balanced uh, justice system, everybody who has uh, always involved in these uh, corrupt uh, uh, shenanigans or saga should be shown the way out or should be investigated accordingly. But for Nigerians out there, I think this government is still too fresh. We still have uh, a lot of time. We still have to give the president some time. I just have to cut you there. For Please. Nigerians who have uh, who have to buy uh, commodities they often buy for say ten naira now it's like a thousand yes, naira. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's for it's Nigerians. It's inherited. It's not mm. something that started with this administration. Like I said earlier, that the co the corruption in this country, the economic indices in this country, the currencies and all the currency and you know and all that was so terrible that the right. president has so much to do to correct that. It's only time that will tell. Only time how that much will time, How much time should Nigerians give? It depends give? Because on the endemic it, it, of the, it, the it, system. It, it yes. is really an endemic. Uh, by Sardinia, I mean, we're talking about crime at the increase. Mm -hmm. uh, the purchasing power of an average Nigeria is, is really low. Mm -hmm. Farmers are screaming, we can't even go to our farms. Ten were killed in Benue yesterday. Mm -hmm. Ten farmers. That's so unfortunate. Uh, and, you know, with all of this... How much time can Nigerians give this administration? Anyway, for a proactive uh, system of government, I think uh, uh, between one year, two years, uh, Nigeria should begin to start reaping mm. the benefit of uh, appointing uh, Asiwaju as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or the commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, you know, or the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, so to mm. say. But uh, if you look at it holistically, and the, some of the steps that have been taken so far, you will conclude, you will agree with me, the time will definitely tell. The difference between, uh, you know, uh, how do you call it, prosperity of this country, the difference between the change in time and attitude of Nigerians will be predicated by time. Because I can see light in the tunnel. I can see prospects, you know, in the decisions that have been taken by the president so far. You know, gradually, gradually, uh, some of these things will take proper place and uh, it will take a proper shape. Barista Mike Adinye, it's always wonderful to have you Thank talk you to us much. here on As Enjoy As Your Life. It's but I will not conclude okay. without saying this. Right. Nigerians, please give Mr. President some more time to act. Mm. It's still too fresh. It's still standing with one leg, trying to make sure that some of these crooked, crooked things that have been put in place right. of the previous administration that he inherited are corrected before he, you know, things can be done right. Mm. So he needs some time. That's my parting word. Okay, he, 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 inherited, he inherited, he um, inherited, well, he said you shouldn't give him time. He's going to come in, uh, running. Uh, and he's so running. Okay, and you're asking for his for time. time. Who caught it? No, yeah. the time I'm talking That's about is not idea. the we fact really that he has not done it. Right. He has done some things, but he still needs some more time to do more. Okay, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you very much. We thank have to bring you mine. back one of these days to continue this conversation. <sighs> it's okay. Uh, and, and, um, uh, for those who tried to call, like I, like I see that uh, there were those who tried to reach us and to share their thoughts on what is going on. We'll be back tomorrow with so much more. You have yet another opportunity to call into the program and share your thoughts. But thank you for trying. The network wasn't so kind today. I'm, ho I'm sure it will be better tomorrow. Well, my name is Joy Asaya, wishing you a restful evening. Have a wonderful day until we meet tomorrow.